Joe Bent is here, but she must, I mean, she's still in a meeting, I think, down there. Well, welcome. It is the appointed hour. I will call to order the December 17th meeting of the Oklahoma City Riverfront Redevelopment Authority. Uh, item two, the first item is an oath of office for Gloria Torres as the uh, authority's sur um, surrogate trustee for the mayor. I'll ask uh, Francis to swear her in. It is my privilege. Okay, place your left hand on the Bible, raise your right hand, and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Gloria Torres. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support, obey, and defend. That I will support, obey, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Oklahoma. And the Constitution of the State of Oklahoma. And that I will not knowingly. And I will not knowingly. Receive directly or indirectly. Receive directly or indirectly. Any money or other valuable thing. Any money or any valuable thing. For the performance or non-performance. For the performance or non-performance. Of any act or duty. Of any act or duty. Pertaining to my office. Pertaining to my office. Other than the compensation allowed by law. Other than the compensation allowed by law. And I further swear. And I further swear. That I will faithfully discharge my duties. That I will faithfully discharge my duties. As surrogate trustee. As surrogate trustee. Of the mayor to the Oklahoma City of the mayor to the Oklahoma City Riverfront Redevelopment Authority River, Riverfront Redevelopment Authority to the best of my ability to the best of my ability congratulations thank and you. welcome thank you I think there's actual compensation <laughs> Item three is items from the chairman, and I don't have anything this month. Item four is the minutes from November 19th. Do we have any changes or corrections? Move approval. Second. Cast your vote, and it passes unanimously. Item five is a consent docket. Receive the oil and gas revenue report and receive the Oklahoma River Corridor events update. Any questions on either one of those? Second. Cast your vote, and it passes unanimously. Item six is primary agenda items. Item A is to receive the Oklahoma River Maintenance Projects update. Got anything going on this month? Well, it's been kind of a quiet month. Uh, <laughs> report really much different than it was last month. Um, as we indicated, we suspended operations in the sediment basin. Uh, we out spent all the money that was allocated on that. Uh, right now, the contractor is still planning on beginning dredging operations in the western basin in January. Uh, that will require us to lower that basin for a couple months. Uh, there's a large pile of sediment just downstream from the May Dam that we need to get removed. Um, as far as debris removal on the river, uh, they collected a total of 4.8 tons of debris over the last month. Um, surprisingly, 3.3 .3 of it was from the eastern basin. The rest was from the waste western basin. It seems like May and the western basin are usually the heavy ones. Um, other than that, I really don't have anything new to report. Is there questions? Any questions? Any motion to receive the report? Yes, you vote. Passes. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Item B is to receive a MAPS project update. Hi, my name is Jim Shepard. I'm the construction project manager for MAPS for the river project down there. Um, I brought some slides today, <clears throat> but pretty much what I want to start off with is I want to let you know what we've done that I don't have the slides on today. Um, we started off with the cathodic protection um, the project, and that's to protect the unistruts and all of the steel portions of the, uh, the rapid blocks uh, that are in the canal. That has begun. Uh, we have ordered the um, capacitors. Uh, the capacitor bank uh, was a 20-week lead time. Uh, we do have the capacitor bank is ready to go. Uh, we're still waiting on the switch gear, and that's supposed to be here sometime in the middle of January. Uh, the installation on that should take about a week. 
and we should be done with that by the end of January. The other item that we had uh, outside of the bid items that we were looking at uh, was the filtration project. And we put it out to bid. As you guys know, it came back way, way over budget. Um, so we decided at that point to set the project aside, not accept the bids. Uh, we sent that to council and rejected the bids. That doesn't mean that we quit working on it. Uh, we've had, as a matter of fact, I've had uh, a meeting as late as yesterday about this. We've got some new ideas. Um, Cloud uh, H2O, yeah, Cloud H2O, uh, S2O, uh, they were in the middle of this project from the very beginning, and they have been instructed to kind of look this over and see what they could come up with. In the meanwhile, we got a hold of a company called American Water Source. Um, they have done a lot of filtration projects across the country and actually out of the country. Um, was very impressed with some of the results of their tests. Uh, one of the big challenges is for us at this point is how do we get the debris out of the water that's there now? And looking at this project, there's no way to really at this point uh, to drain that thing. I would be so afraid of all the bad things that could happen. I'm not even going to go into that list. Uh, but we have found a, a possible option, and we're, we're, we're seeking out what that's going to cost and what our options are there as far as how we deal with it from this point forward. But with that said, I'll go to my first slide here. The, um, the Oklahoma Ro River Boat District down there, we've got uh, a double occupancy surf machine uh, that was let for bid. Those bids came back. Uh, again, they were significantly over budget, but there was also uh, some discussion about the fact that we need to move forward with this. Um, this is something that will help enhance the revenue uh, at the boat dist Boathouse District. Uh, it's something that Mike needs to help prop his, his organization up a little bit down there. Uh, so that went to council this morning. Uh, that was approved at council this morning. Uh, so we'll be moving forward with Downey uh, to get that underway. Uh, kind of phase two of this is a renovation of the Whitewater building itself. Uh, there's a second floor build out that's planned for that. Uh, kitchen renovations, uh, new restrooms, conference rooms. Uh, there's an exterior deck. Um, there's an observation deck on the west side. And uh, we're going to actually enhance the, the bar and the, um, uh, with the big water grill. Um, those are all in efforts, again, to help uh, improve the revenue stream uh, so that, that that facility can be a little bit more self-sustaining. Um, I, I firmly believe that with the um, uh, double occupancy surf machine, and the changes to the, the food and beverage portion of this, I think there's a good opportunity to increase uh, the revenues down there. Uh, in phase two, there's also a zip line that will go out with the uh, second story build out and um, also some drainage. Uh, one of the reasons that we feel like there's maybe some much sediment in, in the river or in the canals themselves and in the basin is when the project was first opened, there's some drainage that was there that got covered up. Uh, so that drainage is going to be opened up, plus now all of the landscaping is mature. It's, it's in place. It should hold uh, any kind of deterioration of, of what's around it. So we shouldn't have any more sediment that comes in just from wash. Uh, areas that we do have some, some wash that's going in it right now, we're going to address those. Uh, because we also have a landscaping budget that's a part of this uh, that we'll be addressing some of the landscaping out there to help it more friendly, it be, become more friendly to the canal. Um, and then phase three, these are water features, uh, climbing features, and youth water activities. Um, we will see exactly where we're at, and the reason this is broke up into phases, phases is we were given a, 
a certain amount of money, $7.9 million, to do these projects. Um, so we're moving forward with the first part of it, the second story build out, um, the zip line, the drainage, and uh, the surf machine. Once we get that accomplished, we'll find out exactly how much money we've got left, and then there's going to have to be some decisions made on how that's spent. Uh, the recommendation that I've given Mike, and I think he's in complete agreement, is uh, we need to fix the filtration problem. Um, we just need to improve the optics of the water down there. And that's one way that we could do it. This is kind of an overview of what uh, the facility will look like when we get done out there. The very top lines up there in the orange, that's the four-person zip line. Uh, the lighter blue right below it, those are the channels. Down at the bottom of the page, you can see where the surf machine is at. The blue diamond that's right beside that is the water sports building. And then off to the west or to the left of the diamond, uh, you can see where those will be some of the water features and things of the future. This is just a shot of what a double occupancy surf machine is. Uh, I don't know how many of you actually knew what that is or know what that is, but this is what it is. It's got a pretty outstanding throughput, so it's something that they can actually put a lot of people through in a quick, quick order. Again, just a second picture of the surf machine. And again, I put another uh, site plan up there. I wanted to make sure everybody could see exactly where the surf machine was in relationship to uh, the whitewater facility itself. There's going to be, and I'll show this in a minute, a new deck that's built on the southeast corner of the facility, and it will actually overlook the surf machine, so it will give people the opportunity to come and watch as well as participate. Uh, this is a floor plan of the changes that are going to be made to the first floor of the Whitewater facility. At the very top in the purple, that's a staircase that leads upstairs. Uh, just below that, there's a grand staircase that opens up into the retail space on the first floor that exists now. The grab-and-go is just kind of a vending machine type area. Um, the bar and the other stuff right in that area, that's all going to be changed up just a little bit so it will actually cater to the people coming in and out a little bit better. Uh, there's going to be a dumb waiter that's installed to help support the functions that are going to go on on the second story. And there's going to be an expanded kitchen space that takes place so that the events that take place upstairs can be catered. Uh, there are a line of cubicles. Uh, that exist right now where the new office space is shown. Uh, they run partially down that way, and those, those offices are there, but they're just real small. So the cubicles are going to be done away with, and the, large, and the offices are going to be enlarged. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see a viewing balcony. Uh, that viewing balcony will look off to the west. It has a great observation point of the entire grounds, as well as a great... Uh, view of the river, especially in the evening with the sun going down. This also uh, has a, du a dual purpose. That dual purpose is to support a second point of egress uh, for the fire marshal. Also on the west side of the building there is a glass overhead door. Uh, the decision was made to put this in so it would improve the circulation of the foot traffic uh, through the building. Uh, right now, there is an egress that's on the west side. It's just real cumbersome to get to. This is going to make it more welcoming and inviting for people to come in and visit uh, the food and beverage portions that exist here. This is the upstairs. If you'll see at the top, the purple, the epic deck, uh, that's a, a huge deck that's going to extend off of the south east corner of the building, it's going to overlook the surf machine. That grand staircase is going to come up and it will actually uh, come to a landing where you'll be able to either go to the epic deck or you're going to either take a few steps up and go to the event center upstairs, I'm going to call it. Um, in that area, you're going to see some restrooms, some storage, 
Uh, there's a corridor that pretty much encapsulates all of that, and that's kind of by design, and that's to keep that flow to where it can go to either one of the, those exterior decks. Uh, there's meeting rooms that are there that can be broken up into three different spaces with accordion walls. And again, at the bottom, that viewing deck. This is just a picture of what you might expect to see um, just looking into the room. Again, the collapsible walls, uh, the finishes in there will be done at the same level as the finishes on the first floor. Um, should be a very nice facility and should be something that's very easily rented. Again, just another shot of what you might see in there. And again, overall look at the facility. And this is just kind of a, a view of what you would see if you were standing up on top of the hill by the um, by the generators and stuff up there. Uh, this would be looking back from the east to the west. The tower uh, on the right-hand side there is a steel structure that will support the four-person zip line. And then there was an option that was shown for a, a wood tower. However, I don't think it actually complements the rest of the ground. So it'll probably be steel. Uh, that'll be a decision, though, that uh, will be made by uh, Mike and his group. That's it. Any questions? Any questions on the report? Well, thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity to come and share with you guys. Thank you. Motion to receive that. Cast your vote. Passes unanimously. Item C is to receive the Oklahoma City Riverfront Redevelopment Authority's annual financial report for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2019. Good afternoon, Chairman and Trustees. I'm Kelly Parker with the Accounting Services Division. Like you mentioned, I am here to give you the very abbreviated version of the financial for the Riverfront Trust for the uh, fiscal year that ended on June 30th of this year. Uh, anybody that wants to see it is in your packet, and it's also been published already for on OKC.gov under the Finance Department section. Uh, the, again, this year we're on our, I think it's our third or fourth year with Alan Gibbs and Hewlett for our external auditors for the city. Uh, they're based out of Kansas. AGH uh, was able to provide the Riverfront Trust and all of our trust unmodified opinions, which basically it translates into a clean audit is what that means. And uh, they also did not um, identify any deficiencies in the inter uh, internal controls. The net position did decrease this year for the Riverfront Trust. Uh, a uh, very quick overview right here on this slide. Uh, cash and investments did have an increase of 35000 The receivables decreased just due to a timing of a receivable in the prior year. It was just outstanding. We hadn't received the money, but we knew it was coming for a one-time revocable easement payment. And then capital assets, they depreciate. So there was $59,000 in depreciation that was all normal in the fiscal year that ended on June 30th. Liabilities did increase $1,000, and it was related to unearned revenue for the leases. Um, a lot of your uh, lease payments come in early, they pay in advance, and we go back and we earn those as the months progress, so there was some sitting in unearned. Total revenues did have an increase. It, uh, the trust doesn't normally see big dollars like this, but this uh, $1.23 million was the bulk of that is related to the management fee that we received from the general fund to pass through uh, the Riverfront Trust. And then, of course, on the other side of that, it increased our expenses. This is the $1.23 uh, million as we passed it on to the Oklahoma City Boathouse Foundation for their management fees. Uh, inside the rest of the revenues, it, there was fluctuation in oil and gas, and then leases did see a $2,500 increase from the prior year. The bulk of that comes from the Latin American uh, Soccer Club. That's a, it was a new lease this year. Up, uh, uh, it started in July 31st of 2018. From that time and through May, they did month-to-month -month payments. From there, we, uh, they upgraded their lease, and now they do an annual payment that they pay in advance, just like most of the leases. Uh, promised it would be a brief, so I'm open to any questions. 
Any questions? Any on it? Motion to receive that. Cast your votes. It passes unanimously. Thank you. Item D is to receive a report on the River Stakeholder Group Meeting. There's a uh, written report. Any questions on it? Nice tour of the, uh, got a new name. First American. First American Museum. Motion to receive that? So Cast your vote. Passes unanimously. Item E is to recommend that the Oklahoma City Council approve a revocable permit with in motive Oklahoma for the frozen nose 5K. That doesn't sound very good at all. <laughs> February 9th, using Wheeler Park, um, 1120 Southwestern and the Oklahoma City Community Foundation River Trail. Any questions on that? Second. Cast your vote. Passes unanimously. Item nine is a claims docket. Any questions on the claims? Motion to approve. Pass your vote. Passes unanimously. Item eight, additional items, comments by staff. You got the uh, director report, Doug. You have anything else you want to add? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Be happy for you all to accept it as written. I'd be happy to answer any questions. The uh, groundbreaking for the uh, Manual Press Park went very well, very well attended, and a little chilly that morning, but I think it, uh, and I, I think it's going to be very well received. Uh, that's going to be, yeah, it's going to be an exciting uh, addition to your assets on the river. That's for sure. Yeah, it's very nice, very nice park, especially the Medal of Honor memorial that's going to go in. All right. Any other questions for the comments? Motion to receive. Let's vote. Passes unanimously. Comments by trustees. Any comments? Merry Christmas to everybody. Yeah. Gloria, you have any comments you want to make? First meeting? You want to wait a while. <laughs> Can I move all of y'all over to 900 North Pine? I mean, we have a new address. This is go, this one will go a lot faster. <laughs> I'm excited to be here. This is um, not exactly sure. I, I started to go through the agenda. Sorry. I started to go through the agenda, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> I'll figure it out when I get there, because there was a lot of things that I'm just not as familiar with. So this is exciting. I'm, I'm glad to be able to represent uh, Capitol Hill and South Oklahoma City up here. So we're, we're adjunct to the river, so I'm excited to be a part of it. Well, we're happy to have you. And, and please, if we, we tend to move a little fast because we've done these for so long in this order, but anytime you want to stop and ask a question or, or even before meeting or after, please feel free to do that. Sure okay. Thank you. Any other comments? Any citizens to be heard? Mike, anything good going on down there? I'm trying to keep it going. <laughs> um, yes, Mike and up here. I, I wanted to just mention since our last meeting, um, we did make an announcement uh, about the Olympic trials coming to Oklahoma City again in May. <clears throat> What's significant about this, again, it's tying Oklahoma City again to the Tokyo Olympics. Uh, it would be whitewater slalom or whitewater course, but it's two, both rounds of the trials. So the first time ever they were having them both in one location in Oklahoma City back-to-back -back weekends, which underscores how they feel about Oklahoma City and what we're doing here. So. Uh, we'll send out more information as, as that draws closer, but we're really excited about that. That also means athletes and coaches will come in as soon as we get the Whitewater Center open in March and be here for well over a month, a month and a half getting ready. So it's uh, just another good thing uh, coming. And I also just, just wanted to emphasize that we, um, we, we have our Thrive Initiative well underway with all of the, our community partners. Uh, from all across Oklahoma City. This was recognized last week by the outdoor industry nationally, and they fo focused on Oklahoma City and went out in the outdoor industry publication about the Thrive Outside, and we've uh, connected to well over 2,000 youth who have, been go have gone through that program so far. We plan on incorporating those, those programs in the Olympic trials, and we have another big announcement coming next month about another event and also some commercial development that I think is finally getting ready to happen. So with that, Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Mike. Mike, I do have a question. 
on the memberships. If I remember yes. right, you had uh, in December some opportunities uh, for the membership. Yes. Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> now we, we are um, we are in a promotion for the uh, holidays. It's a 50% off opportunity for anyone who wants to buy a uh, a pass. We're calling the extreme pass as the higher level pass, and also we will be coming out with a 50% off for our lifestyle pass membership, which is allows you to do all the fitness facilities as well. So, really a good a great value to be you know to get involved in this. Very unique opportunity for people in Oklahoma City. Uh, it's you know no nowhere else has what we have, so we we're really trying to make it accessible. So, and so far sales are really are great. And uh, this year, as I'd mentioned before, we saw sales increase about 70 percent last year. So we're hoping we continue that trend, especially with the new attractions and other amenities coming. So, all right. Very good. With these memberships, do you get noti early notification of events coming? We or do have a, a, we have actually a new point of sale system that will help with that communication to members that will give them, give everyone notices about the upcoming events so they can tie into, so they can be a part of the Olympic trials and all the other things happening. So, yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Likely will be a surf event too coming because of what we will have to offer. So, yeah. We're excited about it. Good things happening right. down there. Yeah. If we could just get the water cleared up. We, uh, they are power washing <laughs> as we speak, and uh, it is a massive project all over the holidays. They'll be cleaning every square inch of the whitewater facility. We can't get it, as it was mentioned, we can't drain it all the way, but we will do everything we can to get everything out and then um, be ready for next year. So all right. thank you. Very good. Any other citizens to be heard? We are adjourned.